Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here. And since I got a request on how to do kind of more of an advanced and decorative base for this miniature here, this Battlemaster, I'm going to show you how I went about doing it. It's not complicated, it's just a few steps, and if you're prepared and methodical about it, it's pretty easy. So I've laid out the materials I'm going to use. Uh, I've got some, some stuff kind of set up to put onto the base, and I'll go over those things here. We've got the yellow coarse, um, it's kind of a flocking, it's a uh, coarse grind, and then I've got a fine grind, kind of a lighter yellow, greenish color. And then uh, I've got some railroad ballast, some medium grit there. And then I've also got some cork. You can get that from Hobby Lobby, or it just comes in sheets, uh, little like quarter-inch thick pieces. You can probably find them at a uh, office supply store as well if you have something like that near you. So it's real versatile. I use it in a lot of different things. Uh, what we're going to do is basically split it, and we're going to try to keep the flat edge at the bottom there so that when we go to glue it down we have a nice even surface but since we split it we'll get a nice texture and kind of a rocky outcropping appearance when we get it painted up and um, shaded and everything so uh, it looks really good and you'll see I've also got some grass tufts these are just some uh, yellowish green static grass tufts if you don't have these that's fine you can use static grass itself it takes a little bit more time because you have to let that dry but you can still get a good grassy uh, shrub and uh, undergrowth type of effect with that. I've got some liquid super glue. Uh, I ran out of the dollar store stuff is what I usually use, but that's just uh, that's Loctite. But you want the liquid. I've also got some Vallejo black surface primer that I'll use for the base edging. I like to use that. It's a little bit more resilient than regular paint. For the paints itself, I've got Game Color Earth. Got uh, rainy gray from Reaper, but any mediumish gray is fine. If you need to mix some black and white to get it, that's also fine. And then I've also got a earth or dark brown shade. I'm using Agrax Earth Shade, and then I've got a lighter Quick Shade ink, which is a bit of a lighter brown. But if you don't have that, you can take the darker Earth Shade and add some water to it or some Flow Aid and thin it out, and it won't be as strong. The miniature that we'll be using today, I've cut from the plastic base and I've added some putty to the hex base, metal hex base here, and then I've drilled the hole for the foot so that I know where it's going to sit. And then I've also put arrows on there to show me which way is going to be the front so that when I'm working on it, I don't lose track. I also marked the bottom side of the base as well, so once I start working on it, I'm not going to get confused. Now, of course, I know most metal Battletech miniatures have a base uh, incorporated with the miniature and if that's the case that's fine you can still do this technique it's just you're going to have the miniature there so you'll probably want to get that all primed and cleaned up and everything else and done first and you can actually have it painted and then do the same technique and it's it's still applicable it's not going to interfere with the paint job so i've just kind of outlined the feet on where it's going to go so now when i go to start placing the rocks and kind of get an idea of where i'm going to put the terrain i'm not going to interfere with where the miniature is going to be standing all right, so now we're set up and ready. I've already pre-torn some pieces of cork here in this little dish to use, just some random sizes and things like that, and I've got some tweezers to kind of help me out. But I'm just going to glue those down anywhere that I feel is going to look interesting. And of course, because I've referenced where the front's going to be and I know where the feet are going to be, I can kind of fill it up or keep it kind of sparse. Maybe if I want to put something else on the base or kind of incorporate different things. But do whatever you feel is going to look good. Uh, I guarantee that adding just a few of these things is going to make it look much more interesting and draw attention to your paint job and make everything kind of look like a complete, um, completed miniature that you've spent a lot, a lot of time on. So I'm just going to use a uh, super glue. You can use a gel. You can use a liquid glue. I'm using just some Gorilla Glue super glue here. Figure out where you want it. And again, the tweezers help, but sometimes it does stick to them. Continue to place your pieces of terrain and cork. And if you want to add some rocks or you know ballast or anything like that, you could do that now too if you really wanted to. You had an idea of where you wanted it to be and get it uh, incorporated with some of the um, cork as well. You can put it on top of the cork if you want to. There's no, there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is just me filling up the base and making it look more interesting other than just flat or some rolling grass. 
You don't need to let that uh, cure up or anything. You can go ahead and move on to the next step since we're using super glue. If you're using PVA, you'd obviously want to wait a little bit, but uh, I'm using super glue because it's more convenient. Grab the railroad ballast or grit or whatever else you decide to use. You can use sand if you like. And now I am taking my super glue and kind of putting a large amount in general areas where I want some of these rocks to stick. So get it kind of on the on the uh, surface there. If you have more of a liquid super glue, you're going to need to use smaller amounts at the, um, and smaller areas. You might have to do it a few times because I'm using more of a, a thicker Gorilla Glue super glue. I can put it all on there. I'm also going to use a plate to catch my flakes and things like that so that I can reuse them and not get them all over my workbench. But just drop them on, sprinkle them off, whatever falls off, falls off. And if you want to add anything or pick anything out, now's the time to do it with uh, tweezers or brush them off or sprinkle some more on there. Whatever it is that you feel is going to meet the end goal of what you're trying to achieve here. So I've got my rocks placed down and now I'm just going to fit the miniature just to see how it lays. If it looks like it's going to have anything interfering or not, if I want to add more, that's a good time to do it. So once these are dry and everything is cured up, don't, don't uh, prime it yet. If the super glue is still wet, you'll ruin your brush. But I've got my surface primer. It's just brush on. If you wanted to spray, that's fine too. But I'm just going to use this black polyurethane Viejo primer and let it cure up and dry completely. All right, so everything's primed up. I've let it cure so that it's not going to be running or interfering with the paint. And I've uh, incorporated it all the way around the edge of the base too because I like to have a, a black edge base on most of my miniatures but you can do whatever you like if you want to have sand or something else run along the side that's fine I've grabbed my earth brown uh, anything similar to this is fine it doesn't need to be a specific color but I do like to use a more a medium or a lighter brown and the reason is because we're gonna wash this with a dark brown wash and it will help break up and add some variety and some more natural tones to the underlying earth that's going to go underneath the flock. So just uh, paint it up, get the paint anywhere you want to have dirt in between the rocks is fine. You don't need to be super careful. Uh, you know, most rocks are in the dirt, so there's going to be some dirt going up to the sides of them. This is not a, I need to have any sort of special brush. This is just my workhorse brush that I use for just about everything. It's a synthetic. It's real easy to to clean and even though it's basically worn out I use it for tons of stuff and it just keeps on trucking so a cheap dollar store or uh, Hobby, Hobby Lobby type brush is just fine. I'm going to get that all in there get it, uh, get it established and then again we're going to want to let that dry. Alright I got a little bit ahead of myself here but the base gray that I mentioned earlier is now going to be put on to the cork and any of the ballast that you want to have look more like stone versus earth or dirt. So just uh, grab a little bit, grab the same brush that you use to do the earth tone and just slather it on. I'm not trying to, to coat it all and, and just you know walk away from it, but I'm just using a good amount of paint obviously and getting it all in little nooks and crannies just to cover as much as I can. You know, I'm leaving some black here and there just to kind of give a little natural shadow, but I am trying to cover most of the higher and uh, raised surfaces for sure. Our base coat gray is dry and now we're going to dry brush and add some stone highlights. I'm using this uh, rainy gray light gray color, a synthetic dry brush and taking most of the paint off on a paper towel and then now I'm just hitting the raised edges until I'm happy with the amount of highlight and color. If you want more you can use a lighter gray or even a uh, uh, close to it or add a little white to it if you wish. I wouldn't go full white unless you plan on doing a wash over all the stone itself and that's perfectly fine to do. I'm going to do just a little bit of touch up wash at the very end with a softer brown so I'm going to be going with mostly just this medium and then light gray color because I think it looks good with the contrast of the green but again if you're using different colors and want to change it up you're this is the time to do it and if you end up with something that you're not happy with it's easy to go back to the base gray and then start again because you have really nothing else on the base and it's not going to like it's not like it's going to cause any problems to have two layers of paint on it so dry brush it until you're happy and then uh, once you're content it, grab your wash the brown dark brown wash here and we're going to run this all over the dirt or brown areas and then the edges of the rocks we're not going to do it over the stone you can if you'd like but uh, I'm not in this case, it's just not what I did in the process of making the specific base. 
So I'm not trying to be super careful, but I am just trying to find those recesses and kind of overhangs, making sure that I get them into all those little, little nooks and crannies and things just to make sure that there's not a bright area where there shouldn't be. So just uh, find those places and then you're going to want to let that wash dry completely. All right, so now the base is dry. The wash has created some nice variation on the lighter brown surface for any exposed dirt areas, and it's added some nice shadow around the stone. So now grab your liquid super glue. You can use PVA thin down if you'd like. I just prefer super glue because it goes quicker. And now start thinking about where you want to have some of the undergrowth and low-lying uh, vegetation. So I'm going to obviously want it on most of this brown area, so I'm going to just put a, a decent amount of glue that I'll be able to kind of manipulate but I'm just trying to find places and it's, it's easier with a more liquid glue especially since they do come with a, uh, a finer tip to apply the the Gorilla Glue has a much wider nozzle but even if you don't have that grab a toothpick or uh, even any pointy object really and move the glue around until you're happy with it. I'm also taking just a touch here and there and adding it to the tops of these stones and areas where I want to have a little bit of you know, vegetation and growth that's grown in some of the crevices and things like that on the rocks. So it looks a little bit more natural, but uh, work in stages if you need to, if you're working on a larger area or you're finding that your glue's drying, no big deal. But uh, if you're quick and you have an idea of what you want to do, then you can do it all in one shot. I do recommend you do this on some sort of like plate or some surface that you can clean up easily. I'm doing it on this on my work desk. I don't normally do that, but just for the sake of keeping it on camera here, just start sprinkling it all over and working it into those areas where you spread the glue. Be generous. And then once you're done, give it a few seconds, tap it in a little bit, and then just dump it out. So now just looking around to find any areas where oh, I didn't get enough glue to have a decent amount stick or I'm finding areas that might have just been missed the first time. Almost always have to do this more than once, but to, uh, just to find places that you want to add a little more and repeat the process. I'm just gently tapping here and there with my finger just to kind of flatten some of this out. Some of the the uh, material does kind of stick up a little bit here in places and I don't necessarily want that for kind of a, a low mossy kind of look, but um, you, doesn't, you don't have to. Now I'm grabbing my, my uh, coarse cut foliage. If you have a clump or cluster foliage, you can use that too. Just break it up into smaller pieces. I'm gonna use some yellow just for some, some contrast and kind of give a little bit more visual variety, some, something a little bit more vibrant. So just uh, again grab the the glue and if you use PVA again you need to wait for that first layer to dry but you can you can certainly use PVA if you don't want to use super glue and now I'm just picking places that I might have a little bit of you know veg different kind of vegetation just growing along with the rest of the uh, the base stuff that's already there uh, and I'm just picking spots out trying to make it interesting I'm still keeping in mind where my base of the miniature the feet are going to be going so I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to avoid it completely though, because if you do that, you're gonna have this little ring around the feet that looks like it just magically is standing where there's no vegetation. And sometimes it doesn't look right. So just keep that in mind. If you need to stop and test fit the miniature and kind of get an idea, you wanna put something down there, then you know that's a, that's a great way to figure out if it's gonna look good or not. So I've added uh, quite a bit, and now I'm just going through and kind of picking out pieces that are either loose or if I got a little too much here and there, you can use your fingers, you can use tweezers, whatever. I'm just rubbing off some of the loose material and cutting it down a little bit so that it's not as uh, overwhelming. So just get it to your liking, and we'll move on to setting the static grass tufts. Now when it comes to adding these uh, pre-made grass tufts, I do recommend you have your miniature back down on the base just to get an idea of where things are going to go. If uh, your miniature is already attached to a base, it's obviously going to still be there. But this allows you to get an idea if you want to have any crushed 
grass or if you want to cut some of these tufts in half to make it look like the mech is standing on some of them, this is a good way to get an idea of how that's going to look. All right, once you're ready to start, uh, I like to use tweezers to hold on to these things. Uh, I'm going to use a couple of whole ones, but I'm just kind of pre-fitting it going, yeah, that'll fit there. It'll look good. You can cut these if you wish. They do have an adhesive on the bottom of them, but I always put some sort of adhesive on underneath a glue, uh, PVA or super glue, almost always super glue. But if you want to use PVA again, that's fine. You don't need a whole lot, but I just want to make sure it's going to stick and not fall off later on. So now that I've already kind of got an idea of that's where I want it to be, and I've got the miniature position how I want it, you know, move it out of the way if you can. And then kind of, I kind of try to press it down in a little bit with the, the tips of the tweezers. You can use a toothpick or some other kind of a pointed object and then now I kind of get an idea of yep that's about what I want it right there um, while the glue's still you know curing if you decide you don't like it you know rip that thing off and you might have to touch up some of the stuff underneath it but at least it's not permanently stuck as you can see these these are usually made with a uh, kind of a flat adhesive so if you grab with the tweezers and you have a scissors or a hobby knife would work too uh, on a flat surface you can cut and make a flat edge just like I did here and now I can make it look or I can actually cut it into smaller pieces and now I can fit some smaller ones into some of these little crevices and places where a plant might have just you know taken hold uh, or you can like, like I said before you can put them up on the edges of the sides of rocks or the sides of the foot of the miniature so that it looks like it's standing on that that growth so now that I've got these smaller bits same as before I'm just going to continue placing these trying to find little little small spots where it'll break up the overall appearance of the base. Try not to concentrate in one area just because I think it looks kind of goofy, but also try not to do the exact same thing over and over again if I'm doing multiple miniatures so there's not always one in front of the right foot and two behind the back of the miniature. Just try to be inconsistent with your with your uh, placement so that it, it looks more natural. So I'll continue to place the rest of these until I'm happy and we'll move on. I'm just kind of working through the the tufts here just to kind of get stuff stuck down or pick up any loose ones. When you cut these, they tend to have some loose bristles and things, so you're going to have run you know runaway hairs and stuff. You can trim them down a little bit if you get ones that are kind of not where you want them to be. But when you when you cut them in half, you're going to have these little runaways, so you're going to want to clean those up or you know hit it with some uh, some compressed air or or blow on it or whatever you want to do. But you'll you'll want those not flying all over your your miniature and sticking on your clear coat when you go to do that. So I'm just cleaning those up and then getting the, the tufts kind of shaped how I want them to be. All right, so now it's time to grab your lighter brown wash. I'm using soft tone from the Army Painter. And what we're going to do now is add a little bit of realism to these bushes. We're going to add some, some brown spots, some places where it's not grown as well, or some root structure or, you know, something like stems and things like that. You can see the color that I've got here. You know, I don't, I don't want it to be super dark, but I also don't want to have to sit there and squint to see if it made any real difference. But because I'm using yellow and light green, this would be fine. If you're using something darker, then, you know, adjust it accordingly. You might want to just use that same darker brown wash that we used earlier if you're using a darker green. So now I'm just picking out places on the, on the base itself where I might want to have some darker yellow areas, uh, or darkened yellow areas, I should say, in between some of the natural rise and falls of some of the bushes, and then just random spots here and there. You'll see now as I'm uh, going through, I'm also gonna start adding it to the tufts, trying to give a little bit of appearance of darker roots and leaves and stems and things like that at the base, just to make it look a little more like, you know, there's some shadows and some darker areas and some, maybe some, you know, wooden type of, of uh, substructure to this plant. And then as I'm going as well, if I find places where I want to add a little bit of contrast on the stone, this is a good 
time to do that as well. I've already got the washout and I can pick out some of those areas that maybe, oh, there's a little bit too much highlight or there's a recessed area here or there. And that's where I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that just to add that last little bit of, of contrast and some realism and variety to make the base kind of really tie together. All right, so I've worked quite a bit of this uh, wash in all these different areas to add a little bit of that variation. And you can see now that it's it's nearing completion. Uh, it's got a nice variety of light and darks. It's got a good uh, different amount of like textures and it. it does look kind of like a rocky earth or uh, my hillside. I'm gonna throw the miniature back on just to give you an idea of how it's gonna sit. And once I get done painting the miniature, I can prime the edges of the base and hit it with the sealant. And there you go, matches up perfectly. Subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Camo Specs Online. Leave your questions and or suggestions in the comment section, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Shutdown sequence initiated.